So, I mean, it was a four-year period of in and out, back and forth, still gaining lessons this time. But ultimately, mm-hmm. I was released from the final time from prison after doing 18 months, um, October 2008, so about a month before Obama got elected, which was a really time to be kind of coming back into the world uh, mm-hmm. with this. I, I remember this feeling of thinking like, uh, that this Obama guy was either going to save the world or be the Antichrist because people were just obsessed with him. You know, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't understand what's going on, you know. And, and in that, you know, that sort of uh, experience coming out of there, I came out of prison as a felon and, um, you know, just had trouble getting a job. And I, I was just I, where I was living. I happened to live next to a library. So I would go to the library every single day and just apply for jobs. I also started to just check out books and throughout that four-year period, I felt like this cloud had been lifted because not only was I getting sober off of these you know, crazy drugs I was putting myself through, but also I, I, I got into meditation. There was um, the first time I got locked up, there was a, a every weekend in the Houston Chronicle, they have a, a religious section and there's like, they usually have just different stories relating to religion, but also philosophical beliefs like Buddhism and the Tao and stuff. And they'll have like a, a, a section where they kind of quote different things from the, the belief systems. And there was a quote from the Dhammapada, which is somewhat known as the Buddhist Bible, just a bunch of verses that the Buddha is credited for. And I don't remember what the verse was, but whatever it was, it struck me very hard. And just immediately I wrote to my girlfriend and to my grandmother and started requesting books and just anything I could on Buddhism and meditation, just wanting to know more. And that really began that journey. And so... I, I held with that throughout that whole time period and just started to understand, like I wrote so much while I was locked up. That's really, I think, one of the things that kept me sane. And I really just started to look at my decisions and to question myself and question my motives. So by the time I got out in 2008, my whole life had been completely changed. You know, I was just looking at the world with fresh eyes and then coming out as a felon, I felt like I really felt like I'd been sleeping for the first 20, some, 20 years of my life or so that I was like in this haze of just being a young child that was deeply affected by going and visiting like my father in prison and just seeing these different things that just kind of, I felt like it, they made me put, put me on hold for a while because I was definitely seriously depressed. I had suicide attempts throughout my teenage years and all that led to drug, you know, drug use and addiction and such. And so when I finally got through that, I felt like this cloud had been lifted. I felt like I remembered I'm an intelligent person and I like to read. And so I started, I remember I checked out a book on the drug war and that was sort of the the first thread that I pulled, you know, I read about the drug war and I, out of, after just getting out of, you know, prison for drugs, it was really fresh in my mind. I'd sort of always had an anti-authoritarian, almost you could say anarchist uh, feeling, you know, I grew up getting in trouble, but it wasn't any sort of philosophical backing to it. It was just, I knew things intrinsically were not, you know, I, I didn't care to worship my teachers or the pastor or whatever, simply because they were in that position. And that would be, as a child, you get in trouble when you're like, hey, I'm not just going to bow down to you and respect you mm. or just listen to what you say because you say so. 